Welcome back, everybody. While well, I was in the middle of recording the next episode of Grand Tactician, the Civil War, when I got word that the big, much-awaited Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought update is out. This is Core Patch 0.5. Originally, they had planned to release Core Patch 1, which would have included our first look at the campaign. But they have decided instead to release a release a, a 0.5 patch that introduces the crew mechanic to the game, which is a part of the campaign. But this allows them to work out some of the bugs in the crew mechanics before releasing the actual playable campaign. So we're going to take a look real quick at some of the highlights of this major, major update. And then we'll play a little bit with the crew mechanic and see how it actually works in-game. So ships now have crew, which you can manage, not only in the campaign, but also in Naval Academy and custom battles, affecting your ship design decisions significantly. Crew losses during combat will affect several aspects of ship's functions, making battles more realistic. You can now save your ship designs in custom battles. Uh, you can also save in battles, which is really nice. You can now design not only just one type of ship, but all the participating ship types in your fleet in custom battles. Uh, so now, you know, instead of just being able to design your battleships, you can design your battleships, your uh, battle cruisers, your destroyers, your cruisers, anything you want. There are now separate choices for propellant and shell charges as opposed to just one kind of generic catch-all. There are different types of rudders now. Uh, everything will affect your operational range instead of just setting a range uh, figure. There are uh, changes to superstructure, conning tower armor, belt and deck armor, detailed gun armor. Uh, each gun type can now be armored with side and top armor according to its caliber and type. Before you could only do that with the main guns. Uh, so that's cool. Now you can alternatively type the desired values instead of using the slider for displacement and speed. That's really nice. There's 18 new hulls available, and you can see all of those listed here. I won't take the time to read all of that, uh, including some new super battleships. Uh, there are new guns uh, available. There are balances uh, to the existing uh, things in, in the battles. Uh, friendly AI division commander has been reworked, improved the AI design system, improved further the opponent AI, bunch of bug fixes, some graphics options, settings. Um, so that's it. So, I mean, that's uh, the main stuff. And uh, I've got the music turned off, as always. The music's fantastic on this game, though, by the way. I will say that. Uh, but let's go ahead now and take a look and just do, um, I don't know, just do something random and then go into our design uh, so we're going to take on the french um sure this looks pretty good i think we'll do this uh, let's hit design ship and take a look at this crew mechanic and see how this works uh, so we'll go ahead and uh what do we got here so here's the choice for manual design battle cruisers um so very cool we can do our choices for designs on everything here uh, or allow the ai to do that uh training here we go so there's the crew. Uh, you can choose how trained, how experienced they are. Uh, and we'll see. Let's How does that affect things? Uh, range is now in kilometers, by the way. Uh, crew training spans from 0 to 100. Uh, ca categorized in six thresholds. Cadets, green, trained, regular, seasoned, and veterans. Uh, the training skills increase as training becomes higher and are the following. Accuracy, aiming, reload time, damage control. Now, these are all things that are affected by this. Um, a well-trained crew significantly enhances the efficiency of warships, but cannot replace the importance of advanced naval technology. All right, so there you have that. And then quarters. And how do quarters affect things? I'm trying to see. Oh, there we go. Um, during the battle, a ship may start to have crew losses, and if a station begins to have less crew than it minimally needs, penalties start to apply. Okay. Spacious, standard, and cramped. Okay, very cool. All right, let's go ahead and design our ship. Uh, we'll just do an auto design just so we can dive in and actually see all of this in action. You can see the range uh, in kilometers being affected as things are happening with the build on the ship. And then you can impact that range further by dragging it out. We could go all the way to 23,000, but of course it'll be significantly overweight if we do that. 
Uh, in this case, because it's just a custom battle, we don't need to worry about all that. We've got veteran training, but cramped quarters. Um, and then of course we could go in and design the others, but I just want to dive right into this. I want to see how this gets impacted in an actual battle now. All right, so we had a crash. Uh, so I had to restart it and, and redo the um, build phase and everything. So it's a slightly different uh, scenario than we initially had set up. But, boy, it's been a long time since I've played this game, so it's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm largely just going to gonna watch. I'm not going to do anything. I just want to see how, how things perform. I want to see what happens with the crew. Um, so right here we can see we have 1,637 men on board. 0% losses, and you can see how the battle stations uh, are affected. They're all at 100% right now, and how their skill impacts the overall situation. So that's a very, very cool feature. I like a lot, and I, and I cannot wait to see that in the actual campaign, because that's certainly going to be a big factor uh, in the campaign itself. And then once we start taking hits, we'll obviously start seeing the losses and how those are impacted by things. So what all do we have here? We just have... Alright, there's the rest of the ships. So I'm going to actually put them all... Put them all in AI control. Just because I want to watch what happens and see the impact of the losses among the crew and things like that. It'd be pretty cool. Uh, plus to see the new damage factors. You now there's just a lot I really would like to see here with how the game operates now. And of course with the builds, there's a lot of new features as well. I doubt we'll be able to see what the crew situation is on other ships, but that'll be interesting to see if that happens. Alright, there's a hit with penetration on the enemy. We're at 25% toward actually identifying. I'm going to speed things up just because I want to see uh, what happens when we actually take a hit. Oh, they actually lost sight of them. Interesting. Okay, so uh, this battleship actually took a hit. They've lost 1%. Uh, so they lost 18 men so far. And you can see how that impacts now uh, the situation at the battle stations. Start to lose a little bit of control, a little bit on the main guns, a little bit on the secondary guns. So now we really start to see the impact of the crew as those things unfold. And you can see the different ships. Some of them, these ones have regular training. Uh, veterans here, veterans here. Major impact on the game. I'm excited about that. And interesting too, uh, well I guess the battleships are the same as far as crew numbers. It's the battle cruisers that actually have a bit more men. And we're going to have a nice little collision right here. Not that it really makes a difference when two friendlies fire or run into each other. Ouch. Don't think that causes any damage, friendly collisions. So we can, in fact, see the crew situation on the Japanese battlecruiser now that we've identified it. Uh, and you can see that he's already lost 11 men, which is about 0.5%. So it has no impact so far on his battle stations. He hasn't lost enough men for that to be of concern. Our little destroyer here, uh, 271 men on board. But so far, uh, nobody's getting close enough to really see any impact. Ooh, that hurt. Jean Bart just took a big hit. They've lost 15 men now. And there's a partial pen. 
So once we're done with this battle and kind of seeing how that gets impacted long term, I do want to go back and look at a little bit of the build process and see how some of those new mechanics actually work in manually building a ship. So we'll do that as soon as we're done watching some of the highlights of this battle. So I've started turning my ships straight toward the enemy fleet just so I can kind of force some action and see some real damage here. Jean Bart's down to 72% structurally, uh, but only has lost 3.7% of their complement, uh, which has had no impact so far on the battle stations themselves. So it's interesting to see how that all works out. Meanwhile, our battleship, which has only taken 1% losses, has already seen an impact on battle stations. So I don't know if that has to do with the selection of the uh, crew quarters and uh, what, what the crew quarters exactly are, so I don't know. Um, that's something I guess we'd have to take a look at a little further, but that probably has something to do with it. Now the Yang Wei, uh, which is a uh, heavy cruiser, has taken 5% losses amongst its crew and you can start to see uh, actually a 20% reduction in the ability on the torpedoes. Lesser impact on things like control on the main guns and the secondary guns. And the more losses they take, the more that's going down. Now you're starting to see a significant impact down to 92% on the secondaries. We'll see what a few more hits do. If we can in fact hit the darn thing. And you actually see now that in the damage reports uh, you actually are getting information about crew losses. So right there you see a destroyer lost six crew, battle cruiser lost four crew. So you can see here they're down 12, but um, no real impact on anything. some major stuff happening to this destroyer now. Um, they're out of torpedo ammo because they got all their torpedoes out. Uh, nothing impacted. Almost 8% losses on the crew, but no impact so far on battle stations. Although this ship might sink before they even see any kind of an impact because of all the flooding that's happening. Seems like there's more compartments now. I don't remember destroyers having that many compartments across the bottom. I wonder if that's true for the other ships too. Yeah, you know, it seems like it does. They've added additional compartments. So there's a lot more areas where damage can happen. That's pretty cool, I like that. All right, there goes our destroyer. So that's the first sinking that's taken place. which means we probably lost all the crew there. So far the crew stuff seems to be working. Uh, I know that the reason they decided not to release the campaign, the first playable campaign is gonna be um, the UK and Germany in a particular scenario, I believe. Uh, so it'll be fairly limited in scope, but it'll be a good chance to at least see how the campaign all works. Hopefully we'll see that within the next few weeks, but I don't know. They haven't said how long it'll be. They just said that they wanted to test the crew component and these other major updates before they get there. So now Jean Bart is down by almost 100 men, but we're still seeing no impact on the battle stations for them, which is pretty interesting because then you look here and you do see an impact after the loss of just 18 men on the battleship. I don't know if it's because of the ship type with the battleships or if it has something to do with those uh, components. I guess that's just something we'll have to test to find out.
Now this ship here is down about 17%, uh, and you can see the impact. They have almost no ability to fire torpedoes now. They're down to just 1.4%, so we've done a pretty good job of silencing their ability to fire torpedoes. Uh, secondary guns are down to just 80%. Main guns are still fairly operative. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put these guys back on AI. Although Jean Bart's going to take some torpedoes here. Because uh, I wasn't paying much attention. That might be enough to do Jean Bart in, we'll see. Also be curious to see how this affects casualties. They've lost 6.3%, 115 men so far. That's about to go up with these torpedoes. Second torpedo didn't do anything as far as casualties go. The first one did. But still, no impact on battle stations. And there goes Jean Bart. 100% losses on the crew. Now, I'll be curious to know whether or not there's any kind of feature built into the game eventually that allows for some rescue of some of the crew, depending on how the battle turns out. For example, if you lose a battle um, and all your ships are sunk, obviously there'd be no way to rescue any of those crew too easily. But let's say you lose a ship, but you sink all the enemy ships. I would think some of the crew might be able to be rescued, and I'd be curious to see how that impacts your pool and your ability and all those kinds of things. There's a lot of questions I have about how that might factor into the game moving forward. Obviously that's all stuff that's kind of down the road. So the Jules uh, Michelet has lost about 9%. A little bit of an impact on torpedoes but no, otherwise no impact on battle stations. Though they're going to sink anyway just because of the flooding that's taken place. Four up front compartments not flooded, so they may hang on here. There's been no real impact on the big ships of the of the Chinese Navy. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, we've kind of seen everything we need to see there. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how some of these new build mechanics actually uh, work. So uh, you've got the number of crew members that come with any given uh, particular component. So 350 crew with a modern tower four, 320, 300, depending on the other towers that we choose. So there, there's a crew impact that comes with the various towers. So that's one thing. Um, I'm just kind of looking here at the different options. Obviously, range is going to be impacted, uh, increases operational usefulness, increases probability of convoy raids, increases probability of favorable naval missions. So these are all things that are going to come into play with the uh, campaign. Uh, so the operational range is off, obviously going to be a major, major decision-making factor when we get into campaigns. It's been something we've largely ignored up to this point, but it's going to be huge when we get into campaigns. Uh, fuel storage and consumption increase the ship's cost, decreases available tonnage. So it's really nice that they give you all of these uh, kind of features and tell you how they uh, impact things. So I want to see what quarters do exactly. Um, during battle, the ship may start to have crew losses, and if a station begins to have less crew than it minimally needs, penalties start applying. Um, but I, I still don't see exactly what this means uh, as far as that goes. Let me see if I can scroll this down and see it. Each ship has a crew complement according to its hull and various parts. Quarters determine the maximum amount of crew that can be added to the ship with three available thresholds. 
Uh, the crew services four main battle stations. The minimum crew. So, so yeah. So depending on what you do, if you go with cramped quarters, that means you're going to have more crew members on board, and more crew members on board means you can take more losses before you start to see an impact on uh, your ability to perform. So, uh, for example, if I go to spacious, oh, actually, uh, that gives us 1,300 complement. Cramped quarters actually takes us down to 910. That's kind of weird. I would think that that would be the opposite, that if quarters are cramped, you have more men. Whereas if quarters are spacious, then you have less men. So I don't know if that's backward or what, but uh, at least for now, we see how that affects the complement, and that obviously is going to impact the, um, the performance in battle when you start to take losses. Now let's throw some guns on here. And you can see how that affects range. Uh, and obviously displacement affects range. Um, all of that stuff gets affected by these different things. Uh, let's take a look now. We've got uh, rudder, uh, semi-balanced, balanced, and unbalanced. And you can see the impact those have. You get a faster turning speed with the balanced. Uh, but you get a better turning rate with the unbalanced. And then you kind of get the best of both worlds with the semi-balanced. Uh, what about armor? What has changed with armor? So, so here's our shells. Um, you can see now TNT2, uh, uh, Picric Acid, uh, TNT3, TNT4. Uh, and the techs with those, Composition B is a tech that must be researched. So we've got new techs as avail uh, available as well. Uh, and you also have obsolete things that you can't choose. So that's interesting and that's kind of new. Um, what about, uh, then here's our propellant, okay. And again, you're going to be dealing with required tech, depending on uh, what you have available, and obsolete tech as well. Um, nothing really changing here with any of this stuff. So that's all really cool. It's some really nice new features that really add some things to it. Now, this is all interesting. Here's our generic armor. Um mid belt and full oh, so we've got different armor for different parts of the belt mid belt four belt uh which is much more in line with the historic ships one of the problems we always had with designing was that we couldn't get the different areas um of belts and and deck armors um done differently superstructure and you can see the impact that has conning tower aft deck mid deck four deck so that's all really cool uh, here's the turret armor uh, for the 16-inch guns. You've got the side armor and the top armor. Casemates, um, we don't have anything there on this particular ship. That would apply on certain other ships. But So that way you get just a little bit of a glimpse of all the new features. And, of course, we can go to the different ships and design them. Uh, and you can see that here. I, I could have had it on AI, but now I can just hit auto design and then tweak it if I want to. A lot of different things we can do there. So that's all really cool. So that just gives you a, a nice quick first glimpse at all the new features on the game. Uh, I will probably start playing this again now that we've got this big update. So if there's anything in particular you want to see, let me know. And we will be desperately waiting for that campaign. And I promise you the moment there's a campaign, you will see plenty of it here on the channel. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Hit that like button if you would. And we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.